the diggers manifesto by gerard winstanley 1609 to 1676 this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org the diggers manifesto take notice that england is not a free people till the poor that have no land have a free allowance to dig and labor the commons and so live as comfortably as the landlords that live in their enclosures for the people have not laid out their monies and shed their blood that their landlords the norman power shall still have its liberty and freedom to rule in tyranny but that the oppressed might be set free prison doors opened and the poor people's hearts comforted by an universal consent of making the earth a common treasury that they may live together united by brotherly love into one spirit and having a comfortable livelihood in the community of one earth their mother winstanley the true leveller standard advanced by the publication of his earlier pamphlets, Winstanley seems to have attracted a small band of earnest disciples, eager by their actions to declare their adherence to the principles he had so fearlessly and eloquently proclaimed. However, before taking steps they had decided on, they deemed it necessary openly and frankly to declare their intentions to the world more especially to those whose individual or class interest would be likely to be affected thereby hence early in sixteen forty nine probably in the last days of march or the beginning of april they issued a pamphlet signed by some forty-six of them which seems mainly from winstanley's pen entitled a declaration from the poor oppressed people of england directed to all that call themselves or are called lords of manners through this nation that have begun to cut or that through fear of covetousness do intend to cut down the woods and trees that grow upon the commons and waste land the pamphlet opens with the following vigorous and pertinent words we whose names are subscribed do in the name of all the poor oppressed people of england declare unto you that call yourselves lords of manners and lords of the land that in regard the king of righteousness our maker hath enlightened our hearts so far as to see that the earth was not made purposely for you to be lords of it and we to be your slaves servants and beggars but it was made to be a common livelihood to all and further in regard the king of righteousness hath made us sensible of our burthens and the cries and groanings of our hearts are come before him we take it as a testimony of love from him that our hearts begin to be freed from slavish fear of men such as you are and that we find resolutions in us grounded upon the inward law of love one towards another to dig and plough up the commons and waste land through england and that our conversations shall be unblameable that your laws shall not reach to oppress us any longer unless you by your laws will shed the innocent blood that runs in our veins subsequently they protest against the lords of manners controlling the use and taking the profit of the commons hindering the people from supplying their wants as regards wood heath turf or turfies in places upon the common and continue defiantly therefore we are resolved to be cheated no longer nor to be held under the slavish fear of you no longer seeing the earth was made for us as well as for you and if the common land belong to us who are the poor oppressed surely the woods that grow upon the commons belong to us likewise therefore we are resolved to try the uttermost in the light of reason to know whether we shall be free men or slaves if we lie still and let you steal away our birthrights we perish and if we petition we perish also though we have paid taxes given free quarter and have ventured our lives to preserve the nation's freedom as much as you 
and therefore by the laws of contract with you freedom in the land is our portion as well as yours equal with you and if we strive for freedom and your murdering governing laws destroy us we can but perish therefore we require and we resolve to take both common land and common woods to be a livelihood for us and look upon you as equal with us not above us knowing very well that england the land of our nativity is to be a common treasury of livelihood to all without respect of persons so then we declare upon you that we intend to cut our common woods and trees that you shall not do it unless it be for a stock for us and we to know of it by a public declaration abroad that the poor oppressed who live thereabouts may take it and employ it for their public use therefore take notice we have demanded it in the name of the commons of england and of all the nations of the world it being the righteous freedom of the creation then they warn all wood buyers against purchasing from those who would dispose of such wood for their own private advantage again emphasizing their contention that they would take it only to provide a common stock for all then they appeal to the great council of england for protection and encouragement urging that august body to fulfill the promises so freely made at the outbreak of the civil war to induce them and others to espouse the parliament's cause apparently they did not expect much from them as their appeal commences in the following somewhat hesitating manner and we hope we may not doubt at least we expect that they that are called the great council and powers of england who so often have declared themselves by promises and covenants and have confirmed them by multitude of fasting days and devout protestations to make england a free people upon condition they would pay monies and adventure their lives against the successor of the norman conqueror under whose oppressing power england was enslaved and we look upon that freedom promised to be the inheritance of all without respect of persons and this cannot be unless the land of england be freely set at liberty from proprietors and become a common treasury to all children as every portion of the land of canaan was the common livelihood of such and such a tribe and of every member of that tribe without exception neither hedging in any nor hedging out we say we hope we need not doubt of their sincerity to us herein and that they will not gainsay our determinate course howsoever their actions will prove to the view of all either their sincerity or their hypocrisy we know what we speak is our privilege and that our cause is righteous and if they doubt of it let them but send a child for us to come before them and we will make it manifest some ways they then advance the grounds for their demands in the following incisive words first by the national covenant which yet stands in force to bind parliament and people to be faithful and sincere before the lord god almighty wherein every one in his several place hath covenanted to preserve and seek the liberty each of other without respect of persons secondly by the late victory over king charles we do claim this our privilege to be quietly given us out of the hands of tyrant government as our bargain and contract with them for the parliament promised if we would pay taxes and give free quarter and adventure our lives against charles and his party whom they called the common enemy they would make us a free people these three being all done by us as well as by themselves we claim this our bargain by the law of contract from them to be a free people with them they being chosen by us but for a peculiar work and for an appointed time from among us not to be our oppressing lords but servants to succor us but these two are our weakest proofs and yet by them 
in the light of reason and equity that dwells in men's hearts we shall with ease cast down all those former enslaving norman reiterated laws in every king's reign since the conquest which are as thorns in our eyes and pricks in our sides and which are called the ancient government of england thirdly we shall prove we have a free right to the land of england being born therein as well as elder brothers and that it is our equal right with them and they with us to have a comfortable livelihood in the earth without owning any of our own kind to be either lords or landlords over us and this we shall prove by plain text of scripture without exposition upon them which the scholars and great ones generally say is their rule to walk by fourthly we shall prove it by the righteous law of our creation that mankind in all its branches is the lord of the earth and ought not to be in subjection to any of his own kind without him but to live in the light of the law of righteousness and peace established in his heart the pamphlet concludes as follows thus in love we have declared the purpose of our hearts plainly without flattery expecting love and the same sincerity from you without grumbling or quarrelling being creatures of your own image and mould intending no other matter herein but to observe the law of righteous action endeavouring to shut out of the creation the accursed thing called particular propriety which is the cause of all wars bloodshed theft and enslaving laws and that hold the people under misery signed for and in behalf of all the poor oppressed people of england and the whole world gerard winstanley john colton john palmer thomas starr samuel webb john hayman thomas edser william hogrill and others forty six in all end of the diggers manifesto by gerard winstanley